welcome to Newgrange, anciently known as Sheed and Broga, or Sheed Mock and Oak. And of course, Mock and Oak was Angus Og, or Angus, son of the young, who um, was said to have gained the ownership of Newgrange through an act of trickery against his father, the Dagda, who was the chief of the gods. Now, I'm very interested in the myths and the folklore of Newgrange and Nowth and Douth, and many of the ancient sites, but these in particular. One of the reasons I'm interested in these stories is that I, do, I think they're not just stories, that they may offer us some insight, some glimpse into an original function or purpose or inspiration for the construction of these sites. So, for instance, I'll give you a couple of examples here at Newgrange. Angus was said to have tricked the Dagda out of the ownership of Newgrange. He asked his father for basically a lend, or as we say in Ireland, give us a loan. You know, he asked him for a lend of Newgrange for a night and a day. Now the Dagda acquiesced, thinking nothing of it. He returned the next day and said to Angus, okay, I'll have the brew back now. Angus said, no, it's mine. Um, of, you know, of all time is, compo all time is composed of night and day. And basically uh, the, do the Dagda seemingly gave in to this uh, trickery and went off and allowed Angus to maintain ownership and control of the brew uh, and of course one thinks about uh, night and day and observing you know the rising and setting of the sun and then I suppose the risings and settings of the stars and the fact that you know on the longest night of the year or following the longest night of the year on, on the dawn of the shortest day of the year the sun shines in through the roof box there and down into the chamber of Newgrange. Another very interesting story relates to how Angus was conceived and born, which involves the control of time. And in it, Elkmar, who um, is Bowen's husband, is desired by Dagda, chief of the gods. And in order to have his way with her, uh, the Dagda casts a spell on Elkmar. He sends him away on an errand or a journey, which to the Elkmar's eyes only lasts for a day but which in reality lasts for nine months. And when he departs on this errand, when Elkmar departs on this errand, of course, the Dagda has his way with Bowen and uh, she, she conceives of a child and the child is born and the child is called Angus Og. Elkmar returns thinking nothing of this because of the magic spell that's been worked on him. And I often say that it's akin to a sort of a, a Jedi mind trick so that when Elkmar returns, Dagda just goes, there is no child. And uh, therefore um, you could, I, I suppose say that uh, Angus was born through a sort of an immaculate conception of sorts. But the nine months is very interesting because at nearby Nouth, uh, the passages are aligned, not exactly on equinox, but the Eastern passage is aligned such that uh, when the sun shines into it, whatever the moon is doing on that day is exactly nine months uh, to the longest night of the year. So you could say that maybe the myth is referring to both. But what's interesting is that at nearby Douth, which is the third of the great passage mounds here at Brunabonia, there's also a story about the control of time in which the king, Bressel Bodibad, brings all the men of Ireland. And I, I, I uh, Sorry about the sexism, but that's what the myth says. It doesn't mention women. It just says that the men were constructing the mound from which uh, Bressel could reach heaven. And in order for the uh, construction to... Uh, be undertaken the men have said that they will only work during the daytime so the king's sister works a magic spell on the sun in which she stays the course of the sun in heaven so that there will be an en endless day and no night and so the men of Ireland are able to build uh, Bressel's um, project I think he's a little bit of a megalomaniac but anyway that's an aside but um, during the construction the king commits incest with his sister and as a result of this act the spell on the sun is broken and a sudden darkness comes on the place and uh, the men say well we pledged ourselves only to work during daylight and because night has come uh, we shall depart from this task and that's how doubt got its name because they say duod or darkness shall be its name forevermore but i'm very interested too in this story from the wooing of eating um which is an old myth and uh, in particular the reference to Newgrange, which I think is very interesting because it offers us a little bit of glimpse. True myths, and remember these myths were written down, you know, um, during the early part of the last uh, 
millennium. Um, uh, this may offer us an insight into a function of Newgrange. I think you'll find it interesting. The preliminary events of the cycle are transacted in the land of youth, the mystic country of the people of Dana, that's the Tuat of Danon, after their dispossession by the children of Milid, that's the Milesians. By the way, I'm reading from Thomas Rolleston's The Myths and Legends of the Celts. This is, I think it was originally published in 1912, was it? I can't exactly remember now, but um, this is a republished work. Um, it's about a century old. Midyar, the proud son of the Dagda, a Danon prince dwelling on Schlieve Callery, had a wife named Fuamnach. After a while, he took himself another bride, Etain, whose beauty and grace were beyond compare, so that as far as Etain became a proverbial comparison for any beauty that exceeded all other standards. Fuamnach therefore became jealous of her rival, and having by magic art changed her into a butterfly, she raised a tempest that drove her forth from the palace and kept her for seven years buffeted hither and thither throughout the length and breadth of Erin. At last, however, a chance gust of wind blew her through a window of the fairy palace of Angus on the Boyne. The immortals cannot be hidden from each other and Angus knew what she was. Unable to release her altogether from the spell of Fuamnach, he made a sunny bower for her and planted round it all manner of choice and honey-laden flowers on which she lived as long as she was with him, while in the secrecy of the night he restored, restored her to her own form and enjoyed her love. Now that's incredible. So we have the story of Fuamnach, who's <coughs> um, Midger's wife, I suppose, jealous of his new lover, Etain, and she turns her into a butterfly and causes a storm to buffet her around the country for a while. Until one day, by, by chance, a wind blows her in the window of the palace of Angus on the Boyne. Now there is only one window, as it were, at Newgrange. <clears throat> Apart from the doorway, is the window, what we might call the light window, or the roof box above the doorway, which you can see there. And this is the light box through which the sun's beams enter on winter solstice, on the dawn of the shortest day of the year, and cast their beams down into the chamber. So is the story recounting some knowledge um, of the function of Newgrange? Well, I think so, because it says then, unable to release her altogether from the spell of Fuamnach, he made a sunny bower for her. So she's gone into Newgrange in the form of a butterfly, and Angus is making a sunny bower for her. In other words, on the solstice, the sun's light is streaming in there. And this is contained in this ancient myth that was written down long ago and probably passed by word of mouth for generations and generations. How far back does it go? We can't really tell, and that's the case with a lot of these myths. It is, however, uh, curious at the very least that the myths seem to offer some insight into an original function of the site and that's what we see here at Newgrange with the stories of Angus Og and the story of how he dispossessed Dagda of the Brew, how he was born to an immaculate uh, union I suppose and also the story about he, how he transformed or how he allowed the transformed Etain into the passageway. That itself it's inter is interesting in light of the other story about Angus about how he, him and his lover Care took the form of swans in order to be inside the Brew.